Hi everyone, so it's now Tuesday, I thought I'd check in because I haven't done yet, um, mostly because I hadn't read anything, but this week is going to be my sexy week, i.e. I'm going to read all the sexy books. So, on my TBR is Finishing A Quarter of Miss and Furies by Sarah J Mars. I think I got 38 chapters through um, on the audiobook and then it was running out and I was like it's fine I'll renew it and it'll get to me in the next couple of weeks or the next week but um I don't think that's true so I may have to like finish reading it physically. I'm also reading more Orgasms Please by the Hotbed Collective. I am 143 pages through it so far. It's really interesting it's just feminist and about sex and I don't know a lot of the kind of I want to say mechanics but it's really interesting. I am kind of tabbing it a couple of bits, um, underlining it, and I'm going to send it to Sam afterwards because he is interested in reading it. I'm also, well, I was also planning on reading Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. But I have actually finished that and it was so, so good. I absolutely adored it as a romance. It was fab. As a book that celebrated female sexuality, it was fab because it had this woman who was so in charge of her body and so in charge of what she took pleasure in and that was fab and to kind of see it in a sexual context was great but also to see her kind of enjoying giving the man pleasure was great. Um, Sam has pointed out I'm going to be super super sexually frustrated by the end of the week and it's true, I am already. <laughs> um, I haven't seen Sam since the end of October. So that's fun. But um, yeah, I'm going to sexually frustrate myself with both of these. I'm also reading, actually, From Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armstrong. Um, I don't know her name. Um, I'm five chapters into this. I'm hoping to make more of a, like, chunk reading-wise of it tonight. But I haven't finished my writing, and I'm also trying to read this, so I don't know. But I think I'm going to try and focus on From Blood and Ash tonight, because this isn't, like, properly on my TBR. It's just a... It would be quite a funny book to add to my sexy reading list. I also have a bit of book mail which I have already opened because I wanted a picture and that is Reaper of Souls by Rena Barron. I actually think it comes out on Thursday in the UK but it got sent to me and it worked out quite well because I could use it for the Myth Tape Reads Retail Tuesday because the first one and I assume this one as well is a kind of mythology West African exploration thing. I enjoyed the second half of the first one. I mean I didn't dislike the first half but it was just very slow and so I'm quite looking forward to reading it soon so I can read it whilst I still remember it. I was planning on reading this as my author of colour physical prompt but I did read The Obliscape for that so I don't need to read it this month and probably won't get round to it but that is another book and I'm gonna do some reading, do some writing, do some stuff now because I need to. I don't know what my next audiobook is going to be because like I said Take a Hint Denny Brown was my audiobook but now it's finished. I really like A Court of Miss and Fury to come back but I don't think I'm gonna get to it so I don't know whether I'm gonna buy the audiobook but they are my reading plans. Oh, I just very much enjoyed to Take a Hint I also like the fake dating. I have read now two fake dating romances and written one and they're fab. I very much enjoy them. Please recommend me more and I'm gonna go and do some stuff now. Get off my cake.
Drink, drink. Um, it's Saturday. Welcome back. Probably before I start talking rabbits, I should apologise for the fact I've not been here. I've not got any footage. I've not done anything apart from tidy my room. Well, sort my room for painting, redecorating purposes, but it's been so horrible I haven't wanted to show you any footage. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, I've decided I'm going to extend this vlog over into next week because because I'm reading like specific books so because I'm reading my sexy books this week I want to include them all in one go so we're just going to do like a sexy books reading vlog rather than a weekly reading vlog which is fine um so the first one I'm going to talk about I have finished and that is more orgasms please by the hotbed collective I finished it on Thursday night or Friday night no, that was last night. I finished it on Thursday night. Really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was super interesting. It had... I um, I mean, I did think it was really interesting, but I don't want to say I didn't necessarily learn a lot because I did learn a lot, but there weren't loads of things that were groundbreaking. It was just kind of a lot of stuff that I was like, yes, I agree with this. And so that was quite good, but I did enjoy it. I don't know what I think enjoyed it i thought it was very interesting i thought even if maybe i didn't learn a lot it's a very important book to be out there because maybe a lot of other people don't have this kind of knowledge they don't know this kind of stuff or even they don't have the right mindset a lot of the information in this is about how a big part of sex and a big part of enjoying sex is being in the right frame of mind and so I think this is quite good for like giving you that confidence but also good for kind of communication and for starting conversations like Sam brought the ebook and so we stayed up one night well we didn't stay up he'd not fallen asleep and I was also reading this um but it sparked conversation which was quite interesting so I did enjoy that part of it would recommend it if you want to learn a bit more about female sexuality and things and also it has a really interesting kind of content so it talks about orgasms obviously it talks about the clitoris it talks about sex education it talks about the pelvic floor it talks about porn and things so it was really interesting for kind of covering a range of topics i i was gonna say i've read some more of this i don't think i have how much have i read i've read two chapters so well done me it's really easy to read when i pick it up but i haven't been able to pick it up because first i wanted to finish this and then i had to edit today's video last night because i forgot to do it until 11 o'clock at night so that was fun i was rushing doing that because i knew i'd be out today um but it's so easy to pick up when i do read it so i'm gonna hopefully pick it up tonight ideally i'd quite like to read 50 pages i mean it'd be really nice if i read 100 but that seems unlikely but i'm hoping to get a bit more of that read soon i'm also currently reading from blood and ash by jennifer Untrack, and sorry i have a star that is stuck to that book and i'm really enjoying that i'm about 50 percent of the way through and the chapters i don't want to say are long but on the ebook it says it's about 950 pages long which is scaring me um, and so then like each chapter is about 25 pages long, which really obviously isn't actually long if you kind of translate it down. Um, but I'm really enjoying it when I do. I quite like the relationship between Poppy and Hawk so far, even though it's not like a romance. I'm enjoying that kind of, I don't want to say flirting, but that kind of thing. And I 
I'm interested to see where it will go. I don't quite know where this one will finish and where the next one will pick up, but I do have the ebook loan of that as well, and I kind of want to read that. But um, we will see. I've also decided to change my TBR game. So previously it was a prompt and a format. So I try and find a book that would fit the prompt in the format and it just wasn't always working. And what I've decided to do instead is read a book based on the prompt in any format. And then if I don't have a book that immediately fits that, I will then use the format I've been given to then choose a book. So like if I've been told to read a thriller as an audio book, if I've got a thriller, I'll just read it. But if I have a book set in a cold setting from the library, but I can't find one immediately on my TBR, I will go to the library and find one. So hopefully that will work out a bit better. Hopefully then I'll be able to work through my TBR because I was just finding I wasn't reaching for the books I wanted. I wasn't getting through them and it was kind of stressing me out. And obviously that's not the fun part of it. But yeah, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to start some of my writing now because it's about six o'clock, it's just turned six o'clock. We've been out to the yard today, so I haven't done any reading today. I haven't done any listening. The book I'm currently listening to, I think I'm gonna include in another vlog. So I'm not gonna mention it here. Well, I might mention it here, I don't know. Um, But yeah, so I'm gonna do some writing. So then hopefully tonight I can just sit down and read. We will see, and then yeah, I will carry it on into next week but hopefully if I start some of this I can at least kind of come in tomorrow and comment. Sunday and I'm just checking in to say I read another 70 pages of this last night um, and I'm checking in to say that when everyone talks about this book they talk about chapter 55 which I don't know exactly what happens I think I know some of the specifics um, but everyone talks about chapter 55 as this big sexy scene however chapter 42 seemed much more sexy now, I will check in properly once I have read the two and can actually compare them, but I think I'm going to prefer chapter 42. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Just got out of the bath and you can tell because I'm very rosy. Um, hi everyone, I'm just gonna check in quickly to let you know kind of like my end of week plans. I was hoping to have finished from Blood and Ash and A Court of Mr. Fury by now so I could potentially get the video up tomorrow but I won't and that's fine. Um, I'll do another video for tomorrow. I am gonna read because when I last left this I got to the start of part three which is chapter 52 and I know chapter 55 is probably where we want my reaction so I'm gonna kind of read chapter 52 and 53 tonight read 54 and 55 probably on a time lapse tomorrow and then hopefully finish it tomorrow night that would be my ideal plan I'm gonna finish what's it called from blood and ash tonight I've got about 50 minutes left apparently in terms of kind of like reading times I'm 90% of the way through, so it's really not going to take me long to finish. I have many thoughts, but I'll probably kind of update all of them at once. But I feel like we've had the 
mostly sexiness. I'm sure there will be more sexy because it is a long series, but I'm loving it so far. It's really, really good, really interesting. Um, there are folkloric elements, I want to say, that I didn't expect. So that's been quite exciting and I'm definitely excited to read the next one. I know the sequel is already out. I have um, it on loan from the library, so hopefully I'll pick it up next month. And Fairy Lou and Illumicrate are both doing like special edition boxes, kind of around March. And I think I'm going to get the Fairy Lou one because it will have all three that will be out at the time. And then they'll do a fourth one. And I think that's the one I'm most interested in. I'm less interested in a kind of trinkety one. Not because I wouldn't like it, but just because I'd rather have the books, I think. It's that all by the paperback. And I'd probably be jealous if everyone else had the exclusive hardbacks and I didn't. So yeah, I think that's going to be my aim. I'm going to aim to get those, but I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, we'll try and finish it tonight. And then probably once I've finished with that, I will pick up either The Queen of the Tearlin or Dread Nation. I haven't decided yet, but we will see. Right, so now I have finished chapter 55, I can officially like come in with all my thoughts. Um, someone said to me like the other day that, well, they were reviewing a quarter of Silver Flades? I only know it by the acronym, I don't know what it is. Akosufa, that one. Um, and they were saying that they were like tired of the sex scenes by now and I was like god I haven't even read them yeah I, I don't even know what chapter 55 is going to be like and they said I actually preferred chapter 54 so I was like okay I'm going to read both of them together and I 100% agree like I'm just awkward with sex scenes anyway because I just don't know what you're meant to do like I mean I suppose oh no i suppose in this instance they at least had kind of a purpose to the story like they were to show that kind of i want to say bond but like we'll get to it but to show that connection and there was technically a purpose within kind of the world building but like when they're just having sex what are you meant to do like are you meant to is it like Paul? <laughs> Are you meant to find it sexy and get turned on? It's just, it's a bit weird. I don't really know. But I did prefer kind of chapter 54 because it just kind of gives this, I don't know what to say, this like, it actually shows that connection and I kind of liked that it showed a kind of an emotional connection as well as a physical one. I like that it shows Reese as, although like this dark and evil and brooding character, it also shows him being a bit gentle and having trauma and having hurt, even though he's like covered it up with these kind of like dark and brooding aspects. I thought that was really interesting. I knew before going into this that like, spoiler, Reese and Feyre are mates, but that's because it's like literally everywhere you don't see any fan art of Feyre and Tamlin so like I wasn't surprised by that part um 
and honestly I didn't think it was that weird like the whole concept of like Twilight's imprinting like characters finding a mate character having like this kind of innate connection with characters is a bit weird however I feel like how it's kind of handled in this is quite well done like Reese is very much like you are this mate or who I'm kind of like destined to be with but like I'm gonna either let you come to that decision on your own or I'm gonna let you decide not to do it and so I think that was quite nicely done I like that yeah it just wasn't weird I also finished from Blood and Ash last night I like I said had about an hour left so I thought I'd just finish it in one go and I have like a couple of thoughts that I wrote down earlier but forgot to update on so I looked up some fan art the other day because I'm really bad at picturing characters I had seen like a couple of pictures of these characters and I knew that like Poppy had some scars and things because that's obviously a big part about her description but I wanted to look up some fan art for it and then there was lots of fan art with Kieran and so I was like watching the book for when Kieran turned up and then when Kieran did I was like so I'm interested to see where he's going to turn up more in the sequel because obviously he is quite a big player but we kind of don't know why yet. It's a very weird kind of sexual book. I like the kind of royal slash bodyguard relationship trope. I quite like the enemies to lovers trope um, but I don't think I like the kind of sexual part of it. Like... <sighs> It's, I want to say it's consensual because at multiple times Hawk says, do you want this? And Poppy says yes. But there are just as many times where he kind of leaps on her or where she's like, I can't sleep. And he's like, I'll make you sleep. And then he starts touching her. And I'm like, I don't know how consensual it is because although she's saying yes, she's never dealt with that kind of stuff before and so I don't know like yeah I don't know how it works and it's a little bit weird but I have a couple of thoughts on like general sexiness in books seen as these are well I haven't quite finished that one but like these are my sexy books I'm gonna read so take a hint Danny Brown I really liked because it showed like female pleasure and this and from Blood and Ash have done the same but I'm not quite sure how I feel about that now having read more. I really like that there's kind of this focus on female sexuality and female pleasure but I imagine it's because they are like female centred books like female narrators or something and it would be weird if you kind of didn't have that and so I do appreciate that. However Take a hint, Danny Brown didn't do this, but from Blood and Ash and Quarter Miss and Fury have, where, I, is there like a classier way of saying fingering? But where that is almost like a precursor to the main event. So like, here's something that you'll enjoy now and we'll revisit it when we actually do it. But when we actually do it, I want you like, I want to have you all to myself. I want you spread out in a room where just I can ravish you and I'm not quite sure what I think about that I think it's a very weird thing that both of them have had that and also I think it's a bit weird that it's almost then treating again I need a classy word for fingering but treating that as not sex which it is like implying that's not sex means that like lesbians don't have sex or it means that if a guy goes down on a girl before they have sex for like six months that's not having sex and implies that kind of masturbation isn't its own form of sex and so I don't quite know what I think about that but it was just I don't think I would have noticed it otherwise had it not been kind of in both of them and had I not read both of them within like the space of two days. I also like that A Court of Miss and Fury and Take a Hint Danny Brown explored women enjoying giving men pleasure which was quite nice because almost with porn you just kind of get forced into doing it and it was quite nice to see them be like no I enjoy doing this I want to make you enjoy having sex as much as I do but um, the final thing I want to know about um, sex 
in From Blood and Ash, when they obviously have sex for the first time, there's the whole, like, it's gonna hurt, it might hurt, but don't fret. And I thought that was a bit weird, because I thought that when you have sex for the first time, as long as you're turned on, it's not a problem. And I mentioned it to Sam, and he said, um, it, like, depends if the hymen's broken. And I just assumed the hymen was, like, some weird mythical thing like I knew it did exist but I assumed it kind of actually wasn't a thing that anyone worried about um and he told me that it is a thing and it breaking for the first time can hurt but also it doesn't always have to hurt and also it can break at other times like apparently horse riding is a big thing for breaking it and I do a lot of that so presumably but yeah, it was just, it was weird that one, I didn't know about it, and two, that like a guy knew more about it than me. But anyway, I'm gonna finish reading this maybe tonight. The wing thing is a bit weird as well, and also the like, <laughs> it just is a bit weird. I don't, I don't wanna overanalyze it too much, but I feel like that's what I've been doing. Anyway, I've got just under 100 pages left, so I think I'm gonna try and finish it tonight, but that involves me like doing my writing stuff now but that is my plan and I'll probably check out before I finish my other like books because it's a bit of a random reading blog otherwise it's cute I love my flower crowds I've got more them in a while hi everyone I just thought I'd check out now that I have finally finished A Court of Mist and Fury I have this on um because I just took a picture for what's it called from blood and ash and i thought this kind of matched the red and like gold cover and then i was like maybe i'll like dress up in white and wear it with a picture but i don't want to like actually dress up in white now it doesn't quite fit my head um so like maybe maybe if i get the fairy loot exclusive i'll like get a picture and also i realized well i didn't realize i have been aware for 23 years no, 22 years <laughs> that I've got red hair. So like, so does Poppy. I cling to um, characters with red hair. But yeah, so last night I finished A Court of Mist and Fury. I loved it so much. I think I'm gonna rate it five stars. It was just so interesting. Like the end was so high stakes and it makes me want to pick up the sequel immediately. I might put it on loan for my library to read as soon as it's available and then like pick up the book buy the book when I can see it in this kind of cover just because I do have the first one in this cover and then I'd quite like them to match even though I know if I were to like buy the final one next one I still don't know what's called I still think it's called A Court of Silver Flames but I'm not convinced even though that's got a different cover maybe I should just buy the bullets but I do like these I don't know anyway really enjoyed it really enjoy the high stakes I loved how it kind of concluded even though it was like sad but it wasn't sad it was uh, it was a bit sad but I really enjoyed it I said before that I liked the kind of how the mating how the mate thing was handled although I less liked the fact that there's this whole like once you've been mated the male becomes really kind of possessive not possessive but a bit I didn't like that bit so much, but that's fine. We got over it. Um, and the N had some like plot twists I wasn't expecting. Like I knew that Feyre's sisters were involved in the story as a bigger thing, but I didn't quite know how until like the end of this. So I'm excited to see how they get like explored more in the next one. I don't quite know how it's going to happen, but I like how it didn't all wrap up because obviously, like I've said before, the first one kind of wrapped up the series quite nicely as a standalone but I like that this didn't because I was a bit like you're leading up to how it's gonna finish and how are you gonna then carry on but it didn't so that was good um in terms of like just general reading I don't think I really checked in with Take a Hint Danny Brown I started editing my vlog early and I was like I don't talk about it at all but I really enjoyed it I thought the relationship was fab I love a fake dating romance and I thought how they kind of did it was really good and also how the kind of tension was done because so often like it's just like well we've done what we needed to do therefore we'll break it off and that's really frustrating but I think how 
it was handled in this was better. I liked how in this there was kind of a reason behind it. I liked both the characters. I liked that Danny was quite a, I don't want to say a sexual woman, but a woman who's proud of sexuality. And I think the guy was called Zephyr, but it's been like a week now and I can't remember. But I liked how he was like actually the pro-romance guy, because so often it's women who are the really soft characters who are the ones that want all the romance and so it's quite nice to see that reversed. Also obviously really enjoyed from Blood and Ash. I think I'm gonna rate it four stars. That one I'm less certain of. I don't know. I really really enjoyed it but I think I, I don't know. We'll, we'll come back. Um, more orgasms please. I really enjoyed it. I have a bit of a story regarding it. Basically on Tuesday my mum decided she wanted to get an Instagram account not to like really use it but just to follow what my sister and I post and to other people and um, I didn't have a personal Instagram account up until then um, but my sister didn't warn me um, before and the problem is the most recent post I'd made was with the cover of More Orgasms Please out um, and so my mum was like the first word I saw on Instagram was that and I'm like so I've um, sneakily unfollowed myself, created a new account and followed that just because I like my book blog being something that I can post whatever. I don't have to like overthink everything I post. Not that you shouldn't be able to talk about sex because I mean, that's why I'm reading them. You can't talk about sex. You can't make sex a normal thing if we're all going to kind of be awkward and British about it. But I am awkward and British and therefore I don't want my mum to see that but also I don't like want my mum to see that I sometimes like openly talk about the fact I'm demisexual it's not something that I'm like not proud of but it's something I feel like would involve more explanation than I feel like I want to give it's not like saying I'm bisexual or I'm a lesbian because then it's just like these are the people I like for me it's more about the kind of journey I get to like in someone and because I am in a relationship with Sam and obviously I'm gonna be with Sam well I hope that would be really I hope I've not jinxed <laughs> um, but because I plan on staying in a relationship with Sam obviously that kind of journey isn't necessary anymore and I realized it post having met Sam so it's not a problem but I don't really want to have to explain it also because I just kind of keep this YouTube channel amazingly over a year and a half later to myself and I just don't really want again to have to feel like I'm posting certain things because mum might find it so yeah that's also a side note we should be able to talk about sex but I don't want to talk about sex with my parents but even after having read them for a week I still don't really know what I think about sex and books um, I don't really know how you're kind of meant to respond to it. Are you meant to be turned on by it or are you just meant to think it's part of the story? I still think, unless it kind of adds to the story, it doesn't really do anything. Like, I think it with films specifically because that's where I've encountered it most. I think it most about films because that's where I've encountered it most but I just I'm a bit like why is there sex other than to show us that the characters are sexy um I think in A Court of Mist and Fury I don't think it really does have a purpose no <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure it does it like I mean it does kind of but like you could just be like they went to bed and then be like fade to black you don't need to hear all the details. I think in Take a Hint Danny Brown, sex is a big part of the story. And so seeing the characters enjoy sex, I suppose was a big part, but again, I could have done without. In From Blood and Ash, I do think it was important to be there, although I don't think all the sex scenes were necessary, still just because I feel like I'm uncomfortable with a couple of them, but because it was so vital to Poppy's character, I feel like having that kind of, having her explore her sexuality, having her explore sex was quite important. Um, but I suppose like with any other thing, like with diversity, like with kind of inclusion, 
you can't expect those things to be normalised if you don't include them. So I'm in two halves. I don't care for sexy books, I think. I think I will read them. I won't necessarily avoid them, but I wouldn't necessarily seek them out because they were sexy. They're just fine existing and I will either exist alongside or next to them or with them, but yeah. This video will finish, I swear. I'm just doing it from here because there's obviously a cat in front of me. But before this video goes up, I will be posting a related blog post. Um, it was one I was going to do anyway, but basically it's talking about kind of intimacy in books. So the first one I'm going to do is probably sex, but then I will also do like intimacy, like kind of like meeting, talking, learn yourself better. I'm excited to do it. I think I'm going to have the sex one out before this video goes up. The other one will come later, but I hope you enjoy those as well as this video. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed me awkwardly talking about sex for <laughs> however long this video is, please consider giving it a thumbs up, commenting down below to let me know you're here, subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in another one.